Dead parents. We love dead parents. No, I'm kidding. I am traumatized. If I see golf clubs in a scene in a Korean drama, I will start freaking out. Second lane syndrome will cripple me. If anybody's gonna get hit by a car, it's gonna be the white truck of doom. Hey, I didn't expect to see you here. I'm just taking a break from reviewing Korean dramas to review some common Korean drama cliches instead. I created this tier list of 47 cliches to rank on a scale from celebrated to criminal offense. Let's have some fun. I'm Dead Eden, and if you want to rank these cliches along with me, you'll be able to find the link to this tier list in the description of this video. So these are all the cliches that I could think of that aren't just plot points like time travel or slow burn romance. These are more just cliches that could pop up in any K-drama at some point, except for Body Swap. I included that one just because I wanted to talk about it. Oh, and also, as I'm doing this, I'm gonna try and recommend some dramas that have these cliches in case you love any of these cliches, because I know I do. I'm just gonna go to a random one. Let's do No Car. It's so common. You usually see people riding buses all the time and they don't have their own car. Or like they'll hail a cab and it's just magically there whenever they need it. Or they'll just be running around everywhere. It can get annoying sometimes, especially when they're using their lack of transportation to do some cliche things like falling asleep on the bus. But it's not a big deal for me. I remember the drama Link, Eat, Love, Kill. They didn't even call cabs. They literally just ran everywhere. <laughs> if you happen to like the no card cliche for some reason, then Link, Eat, Love, Kill. But you'll see this in most dramas, especially dramas with leads that are socio-economically challenged. My Ajushi would be another recommendation. Also in my liberation notes, not having a car is part of the plot. Let's do the boo-boo scene. I have dual feelings about this. I'm just gonna put it in minor annoyance, actually. I'm okay with boo-boo scenes where they fall or something, they get a little teeny ouchy, and then the other person puts ointment on it for them, and, you know, a bandage. I'm okay with these kind of scenes if it's the guy putting the band-aid on the girl. But if it's the girl putting the band-aid on the guy, it just irks me. It's like, come on, he's tough. He can handle a little paper cut, okay? <laughs> but if the guy's doing it to the girl, then it just seems kind of sweet. Extraordinary You is one of them that I would recommend. Snowdrop has a scene like this. And Queen of Tears, I'm pretty sure, has a scene like this. Oh, also the indigestion scenes can fall under this category as well. Where I used to see it a lot, I don't see it anymore, but they used to, when they get indigestion, the romantic interest will prick their thumb for them. For a drama with that, I would recommend Cinderella and Four Nights. Let's do fan service. This could even be a genre of Korean drama. I will literally drop a drama because of fan service. But not all the time. It depends on the fan service. So I'm gonna put it at technical foul. So for instance, I dropped shooting stars because of fan service. However, Goblin had a lot of fan service. It wasn't shirtless men though. I would recommend Goblin. Also, Reach of Sincerity would probably be a little fan service-y. Queen of Tears. I wouldn't call Queen of Tears fan service genre though, I would call it swoon worthy genre, which is very similar, but I don't like fan service. Not the lusty kind. Swoon worthy stuff, that's fine. Two extremely popular Korean dramas that are nothing but fan service are Tale of the Nine Tailed and its sequel, and My Demon. Tale of the Nine Tailed was tolerable. I was able to get through the first season. I dropped the second season. And My Demon, I completely hated. Let's talk about conspicuously inconspicuous. I love this cliche. This cliche is when you have a lead that's gonna go do something that they don't wanna get caught doing. They're gonna do some stealthy mission or some shit. They always dress in skinny black jeans, all black converse, black baseball cap, black face mask, and I love it. I love it so much. It's so dumb because they're in broad daylight wearing this and they stick out like a sore thumb, so it doesn't make any sense at all, but I don't give a shit because it looks good. It always looks good. As for recommending dramas with this cliche, that's another story. I know Heartless City has it, City Hunter has it, but as for recommendations, Healer, kind of, if you want to consider his outfit part of this cliche. It's a little bit different, though. And also, Eternal Monarch has it, sorta. Love Triangle. 
I love love triangles when they're done right, but love triangles are almost never done right. They're usually just very frustrating, causing conflict for no reason because there's no way the female lead is going to choose him. A good love triangle is when both the first and the second male leads have an equal chance at getting the girl, at least in the viewer's mind. And there's only a few dramas I've seen like that. So I would recommend Cheer Up, The King in Love, which is a saguk, and True Beauty. All three of those have really good love triangles that will keep you guessing until the very end. I'm Anisha. I'm Anisha. It's acceptable, depending on how they do it. For instance, Boys Over Flowers. Oh gosh, they threw amnesia at the end and it was really dumb. Queen of Tears, again, has amnesia. Kill Me, Heal Me. I will recommend Kill Me, Heal Me for sure. That's one of my all-time favorite Korean dramas. Lovely Runner also has amnesia. Sort of. I mean, it's affected by time travel. But uh, yeah, those are my recommendations. Mary Sue, Gary Stew. This is a cliche where there's a lead that's perfect. They have no flaws and everybody loves them or everybody wants to be them. You don't know why people love them. They just do. It is bad writing. If there's a Mary Sue or a Gary Stew character, that means it's a badly written drama. One that you might like that has a Gary Sue would be Tale of the Nine-Tailed. I don't understand why everybody's so obsessed with the male lead. The Heirs has Mary Sue's and Gary Stew's. I can definitely recommend that one. It's classic. Also, Boys Over Flowers has a ton of Gary Stew's in it. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that drama, but it is a classic. How about Sharing an Umbrella? You're gonna see it in every single romance. They'll even have whole dramas centered around the idea of sharing an umbrella, like Something in the Rain, where the umbrella is a symbol for the entire drama. Also, in Dreaming of a Freaking Fairy Tale, they have an umbrella as a whole character. So umbrellas are very important in Korean dramas. I don't know why, but they are, and it's kind of like a tradition, so I'm completely okay with it. It's in so many dramas, probably every single romance drama, but off the top of my head, I'm gonna recommend Lovely Runner, Extraordinary You, and of course, we can't forget the iconic umbrella scene in The K2. Makeover! I actually love makeover scenes when the end result is better than the beginning, because sometimes there's dramas where they do a makeover scene and they look worse afterward. Like, Hello, It's Me. Boys Over Flowers has a makeover scene. Healer, definitely recommend that one. She Was Pretty, I recommend She Was Pretty. Also, True Beauty is pretty popular. The Dreaded Wrist Grab. This is a hated cliche. I don't care about it. As long as the guy doesn't look like he's physically hurting the girl, and he's not doing it out of anger. But I thought they were gonna do away with wrist grabs completely because it was in every single drama. But then I stopped seeing them and I'm like, oh, I guess they're really gonna stop doing this because people hate it so much. But then I watched Queen of Tears and it was all over the place in Queen of Tears. So I was like, never mind, they are definitely not retiring the wrist grab, which I'm okay with. I'm completely fine with it as long as it's not violent. <laughs> If you want a drama that doesn't have wrist grabs, I would say She Would Never Know because everything else is going to have wrist grabs. I didn't even like She Would Never Know, but if you can think of any better dramas that don't have wrist grabs, please let me know. Interrupted Kiss. I'm begging for people to interrupt kissing scenes. <laughs> no, they can't kiss yet. It's too soon. I'm going to put it in enjoyable because if they keep doing it, then I start not liking it. But if it's like once or twice, okay. You have this in almost every rom-com or romance in general. And then we got the open-eyed kiss. I really don't like it because it's so, it's so unnatural. Like naturally when someone gets that close to your face, you want to close your eyes to protect your eyeballs. So it's so unnatural to keep them open. It's especially awkward when they stay frozen like that for the cameras with their lips touching and their eyes open. Common culprits of this cliche are more old school romances like The Heirs or older than that and dramas that are purposely implementing the cliche as a callback to old school Korean romances like W Two Worlds and Lovely Runner. Lone Shark. I used to see these more often back when I first started watching Korean dramas where there's somebody that's being harassed by lone sharks and it's usually a poor female lead, but I actually like it. <laughs> 
So a dramas I would recommend with this would be My Ajushi. And also Uncontrollably Fond has this too. Let's do Love at First Sight. I freaking hate Love at First Sight. I will drop a drama because of this cliche. I dropped Descendants of the Sun after like the first 20 minutes because of this. And Love at First Sight is when literally they just see them and they fall in love with them for no reason. I need to have some reason for the connection. Childhood connection. This used to annoy me a lot because in any romance drama, it's like they had to tack it on at the end. Oh yeah, and they met when they were kids, so it further justifies their obsessive love towards one another. Now I, I'm okay with it. It's acceptable. Dramas I would recommend with this would be Healer, Kill Me, Heal Me, Link, Eat, Love, Kill, The One and Only, 30 But 17, It's Okay Not to Be Okay, Sakuchi Mankin Sana. Yeah, so many dramas have this. Abusive parents. I use the golf club as the symbol for this because I am traumatized. If I see golf clubs in a scene in a Korean drama, I will start freaking out. Because you know why they're there. Because they're going to pick them up at some point and start beating somebody with them. The golf clubs are excessive. I actually like abusive stuff. <laughs> Not golf club level abuse, but it draws me in. Some of my recommendations for this cliche are Twinkling Watermelon, It's Okay to Not Be Okay, Extracurricular, Mother, Kill Me, Heal Me, and Kidnapping Day. Family Secrets. This is common in Makchangs, which are like crazy soap opera type dramas where there's a lot of twists and over the top dramatic things happening. They're acceptable. I don't I don't really care. As long as the story is well written. For this one I'd recommend Queen of Tears and The Last Empress. The only two Makjungs I think that I've liked so far. Cliffhangers. I love cliffhangers. Even fake cliffhangers. I love it. I don't care if they're faking me out. As long as it keeps me watching and getting me through the drama as quickly as possible. Do not underestimate their power. Great cliffhangers can make even the shittiest of dramas bearable. So W2 Worlds, also Lovely Runner did pretty well in the cliffhanger department. The Atypical Family did well and Queen of Tears did pretty good with that too. Body swap. This is more of a plot point than a cliche, but I wanted to put this on here because I hate body swap stuff. And not just where, you know, male and female swap bodies, but also, you know, two people of the same gender swap bodies, or maybe somebody becomes overweight and then they become skinny and they switch back and forth, like in Perfume, which is a drama that I dropped. I usually can't stand body swap dramas. However, one of my favorite dramas of all time is a body swap drama and it's called Secret Garden and it's really well done. It's the most romantic drama I've ever watched. I definitely recommend that one and really I just put body swap on here even though it's not really a cliche just because I wanted to have an excuse to talk about Secret Garden. <laughs> dead Parents! We love Dead Parents. No, I'm kidding. Um, dead Parents is super common. One of the most common Korean drama cliches. I don't know why. It's so unnecessary. Why do the parents have to be dead? I don't get it. Any drama with some trauma <laughs> is gonna have dead parents somewhere. It's a technical foul. Not necessarily criminal offense level. Well, I'm gonna move body swap to technical foul also because it's just me personally not liking body swap. Here's the challenge. Can you come up with a good Korean drama where both parents are alive of both of the leads and they don't die during the course of the drama. Wait, I got one. Queen of Tears. There is a death, but it's not a parent of one of the leads. It's a grandparent. Terminal illness. I don't care. I've seen an increase in this cliche or this plot point. I don't mind it. Dramas I would recommend with terminal illness. The one and only. Queen of Tears. Extraordinary You uncontrollably fond. Also, Doom at Your Service. I did not like it at all though. Drunk Confessions! Drunk Confessions! It's not really annoying, it's just predictable. You see alcohol and you know what's gonna happen. I think it's kind of a lazy way to progress a story, but it can be done right. It could be done in a really cute way. It's acceptable. Some dramas that have this that I would recommend would be Cinderella and Four Nights and also Bora Deborah. And by confessions, I don't mean love confessions. I mean just 
doing something that progresses the story along. So she gets drunk in the beginning and does a bunch of crazy stuff to ruin her career. Evil mother-in-law. It's acceptable. I really don't care. It's just a type of character. It's not as common as it used to be. If they did it in every single drama, I'm sure I'd start hating it, but I don't really see it too often. Fairy tale retelling. <laughs> I love this so much. I have a thing for fairy tale retellings. The original, like Disney fairy tales, I do not like, but I am obsessed with watching the retellings of them. I don't know, I just find it really interesting how they can take an old story and kind of change it and make it their own. And I would like some recommendations because I haven't seen that many in K drama world. I have seen Cinderella and Four Nights, which is kind of like a mix between Cinderella and Snow White. The K2, which has a bit of a Snow White element to it. I love the K2, it's one of my favorite dramas, but the fairy tale retelling part of it is just trash. Legend of the Blue Sea is a favorite of mine. It's kind of like The Little Mermaid. And I guess you could also count It's Okay Not To Be Okay because it's about fairy tales, not necessarily a fairy tale retelling. I don't know, maybe it is. Maybe it's like uh, Rapunzel, now that I think about it. Falling asleep on the bus. You know if someone's working a lot, they're tired a lot, and they don't have a car, you know there's gonna be a scene where they fall asleep on the bus. It's acceptable. I'm not even really annoyed by it. And this also includes falling asleep at the bus stop. You'll see this in Lovely Runner. Lovely Runner is gonna have a lot of cliches in it because that's the point of the drama. It's like a callback to all the original Korean drama tropes. Also, True Beauty has this and My Liberation Notes. Family Suicide Pact. I haven't seen much of this, but apparently I've seen it enough to include it. It's acceptable. I don't really care one way or another. I think they do this in the one and only, but I could be wrong. First Love Obsession. I hate it so much. There's a difference between a drama having somebody end up with their first love versus a drama having someone obsessed with ending up with their first love. Even to the point where they'll ignore all the red flags and still want to be with them as seen in The Third Charm. It's even worse when it's a second male lead that has this obsession. And we know second male leads don't have a shot with the female lead. So it then leads to unrequited love. And I hate unrequited love also. Let's do White Truck of Doom. Let's do something I love. White Truck of Doom is a classic. It's a running gag throughout K-drama world. If anybody's gonna get hit by a car, it's gonna be the white truck of doom. It's a rule. It's awesome. It's really funny. It takes a serious situation and kind of makes it comical by having it be the white truck of doom. Doom at your service has one. Queen of Tears, I think, does it. I think uh, Goblin has it. Lovely Runner has a white work truck of doom. And A Shot for Killers has a white work van of doom. As long as it's a work vehicle that's white, I'll give it a pass. Okay, fluff. Sometimes a little bit of fluff is nice. Too much fluff can be bad, but sometimes you're just in the mood for a nice fluffy drama. So I accept it. The most fluffiest, most recommended drama, I would say, is Reach of Sincerity. It's nothing but fluff and it's super adorable. Also lovely runner. Crash landing on you, maybe. And also My Sweet Mobster is pretty cute. All right, jumper. This is a suicidal character. It's usually at the beginning of a drama and it really catches my attention. No matter how bad the drama is, I will watch it if it starts off with a jumper scene. Usually they're jumping off a bridge or the top of a building. There's so many dramas with this, but I'll recommend Tomorrow, Death's Game, and Oh My Ghostess. Food for plot. I hate food for plot. It's when they don't know how to build the relationship between characters, so they just have them eat meals together. It's really lazy, in my opinion. One of the worst offenders of this would be the girl who sees sense. Speaking of food, we have making kimchi. You'll see this often in Korean dramas. They'll have a scene where the family gets together and they make kimchi together, and I really like that idea. I think it's really nice. So it's acceptable. Usually there's not much to it. It's just a reason for them to gather together and talk about stuff. But I can say, hands down, the best kimchi making scene I've ever seen is from Because This Is Our First Life. Secret Chaebol. It can be enjoyable. I think Cinderella and Four Nights might have this. 
maybe and maybe school 2017 but i can't really remember i think uncontrollably fond actually has it the second male lead i think was the secret table i'm not sure oh my gosh i can't remember Queen of Tears, I can recommend that. That's a secret table story, at least somewhat, where the female lead hides that she's from a rich family. Passing out. I, th I would consider it a technical foul, I think, if it's overdone. Some dramas, they will have an excessive amount of passing out scenes. But if the lead character has a medical condition, then okay. A lot of times you'll see them just passing out because they're overworked. Born Again has it a lot because the female lead has a medical condition, but it's just so excessive to where I hated it. Queen of Tears has it a lot. Lovely Runner has it. And I'm going to assume Extraordinary You has it because the lead female has a medical condition. Secret Relationship. I really hate secret relationships. That's one of my biggest pet peeves in romance dramas because usually there's no reason for it to be secret. The third charm does this for a little bit until everybody finds out because how can you hide that and why would you want to hide it? It didn't make any sense. Another drama I hated because of this cliche is a business proposal. It was so dumb. There's no reason to keep it a secret. The female lead in that drama, she was just like a pathological liar. I could not stand it. But here's one I can recommend. Call it love. All right. Photographic memory. I actually don't see that too often. This was something that would pop up in older dramas, but I haven't seen it in a really long time. And it's great because I really hate it. I think it's really lazy writing. Just give them photographic memory and then they'll just be able to figure things out super easily. There's a drama that uses this only for a second though. It's not really a huge plot point in the drama, so it's permissible and it's 100 million stars falling from the sky. It's a Romeo and Juliet drama, which I hate Romeo and Juliet, but it's one of those dramas that sticks with you. Let's do school bullying. I won't watch anything with school bullying in it. <laughs> It really catches my attention. For school bullying, I would recommend Weak Hero Class 1, Revenge of Others, and School 2015. That one has one of the scary, if not the scariest bully I've ever seen. Also The Glory. Obviously everyone knows The Glory, but that one's very adult. And also The Heirs has a pretty scary bully. He's actually my all-time favorite K-drama character. Let's do Plushy Persona. Plushy Persona, I don't see as often. But it's when one of the leads gets the other person a plushie that looks similar to whoever they're giving it to. You can see this in Hua Yugi and some other older dramas that I can't think of right now. But it's acceptable. I'll accept it. Oh, um, they did it in You're Beautiful. They got a Doji Doki. It was a hybrid between a rabbit and a pig. If you can think of any good dramas with plushy personas, put it in the comments. Because off the top of my head, I can only think of terrible dramas. Stalking! I actually really like stalking. <laughs> I really like stalking. It's not always done right though. Sometimes it's annoying. There's different types of stalking, like thriller, suspense type dramas that have like a serial killer stalker or a um, creepy ex, or maybe even like in a romantic way where the male lead is stalking the female lead for some reason, like Healer, I would recommend that. It's not in a creepy way. There's actually a reason why he's following her around. Link Eat Love Kill has a very scary stalker in it. My favorite thing about that drama. I like a good villain. I'd say the worst stalking I've seen is the stalker plot in Doto So So La Da So. And also Destined With You has a really bad stalker plot. Oh, it's terrible. Let's do Soulmates. I hate it. I used to like it back in the day, but I hate it now. The red string of fate, the we have to be together because it's fate kind of thing. It's so overdone and it's so unrealistic. I want good writing. I want the relationship to progress in a believable way and not because they just have to be together because it's their fate. I saw My Demon, Destined With You, and My Roommate is a Gomiho all pretty close together, all with that same plot point, and I was just over it. I was so over it. Scam Victim. Let's do Scam Victim. I don't see this too much. 
but it is really dumb. It's a minor annoyance unless the scam is like the whole plot of the drama. But if it's just something that happens at some point in the drama just to have a little bit of conflict, it's really annoying. And this happens in actually Bora Debora. It seems like it's randomly thrown in there. But a drama I can recommend is Call It Love. Also, The Atypical Family. Let's do PPL, product placement. I don't have a problem with product placement if it's subtle, but these days, the dramas are doing full-on commercials using the actors in the drama, and it's the most annoying shit I've ever seen in my life. My Demon did this excessively. It was terrible. Cheer Up did it excessively with that stupid coffee chocolate. They also advertised those coffee chocolates a lot in today's webtoon. Even the atypical family wasn't safe from the coffee chocolate. Oi, I hate it. Criminal offense. At least the type of product placement they do now is definitely a criminal offense. Back then, it was tolerable. Piggyback rides? I actually like them. I think it's cute. And not even just between you know, the leads. It could be like somebody carrying their parent on their back or their parent carrying the child on their back. This is in Moving, where the mom carries the kid around. There's also one where somebody carries their parent. Maybe it's, I think in My Ajushi, but you'll see piggyback rides in every rom-com, every romance. They'll get drunk or something and they'll get a piggyback ride. Oh, it's in The Secret Life of My Secretary. I recommend that one. I don't think people remember this drama. I don't hear it mentioned much, but I really like this drama. This is a, a face blindness drama, which I was wondering if I should put that on here, but it's more of a plot point than a cliche. Let's do prolonged staring. <laughs> now, prolonged staring, it doesn't necessarily mean staring into somebody's eyes. It could just be staring at the ground. And I really hate prolonged staring. <laughs> I would call it a technical foul though. I wouldn't put it at criminal offense because sometimes it can be really funny. Like the airs does prolonged staring so much that it's actually really funny. And I laughed a lot. <laughs> so I would definitely recommend the airs if you want some prolonged staring. Oh, also my liberation notes has a character that just stares off into the distance, which is fine. <laughs> It's part of his character. Second lead syndrome. Second lead syndrome will cripple me. I will be sad for a very long time. Basically, it's when the second male lead is a better fit for the female lead than the male lead is, but she ends up with the male lead instead. Okay, I'll tell you some dramas that I had second lead syndrome. If you don't want to be spoiled, just skip over it. I'll put the timestamp. Skip over to noble idiocy. Second lead syndrome, I had that in school 2015. Cheese in the Trap and True Beauty. Man, True Beauty hurt me for a while. Kind of had second male lead syndrome and my roommate is a gomiho. And they were so unnecessarily mean to the second male lead. Also in Tell Me That You Love Me, I developed second male lead syndrome. And I think that's a big reason why that drama just failed for me. Noble Idiocy. Now, Noble Idiocy is the point about two-thirds into a romance drama where either the female lead or the male lead, one of them, decides on their own that it would be better for the other person if they weren't in the picture. So they usually literally run away somewhere. I really hate it. It's a dreaded cliche. Criminal offense. It's really overly dramatic. I'm a fan of working out your problems together as a team instead of one of them running away. A lot of dramas do this. It's very common. Just Between Lovers did this. They do this in The Third Charm as well. But a drama that didn't do this, that I literally cheered because it didn't happen, is 30 But 17. It's a type of drama that you would expect it to be there. But no noble idiocy. <laughs> Okay, that's 47 Korean drama cliches. Did I miss any obvious ones? Maybe I'll add them on and if I add on enough, I can make another video updating the list. Sorry for recommending Queen of Tears so much. Actually, my favorite Korean drama of all time, I did not recommend once throughout this entire video. And that's because I couldn't think of any cliches that it has, but I think that's what makes it such a great drama. And it's White Christmas, by the way, if you were wondering. It's a good thing to not have any of these cliches, but I still really enjoy some of them. 
I'm actually okay with a lot more of them than I thought I was. See, we can always learn a little something about ourselves. Jeez, it's been 24 days since I last completed a drama. I got some catching up to do. See ya.